Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and today's uh, problem I got from one of my subscribers and here's a problem. MCAD disease is an autosomal recessive disorder of fat metabolism. Uh, carrier frequency in the population is 1 out of 50. There is a common mutation in the ACADM gene and here's the uh, name of this mutation in exon 11 occurring in 85% of mutant alleles but uh, rare missense, nonsense, frame shift mutations and exonic deletions have all been reported. Peter Smith is affected with MCAD uh, disease but is now asymptomatic. He has just been diagnosed through family studies. His partner Sarah is concerned regarding the two children, Jan two years and Sophie one year. And here's the three questions. And I will start with question C. What exons uh, would you analyze first uh, to identify the mutants, uh, mutations in Peter? And it is very clear that if uh, mutation, 85% mutations occur in um, exon number 11, of course we are going to start analyzing the problem with sequencing this exon number 11. And as you see, 85% uh, of all mutations would be substitution of lysine at the position 329 with glucine. And if uh, we wouldn't find a mutation here, then we will proceed uh, with uh, other possible Variant, so we would probably sequence other exons and we would find uh, what might cause this uh, genetic disorder. So now let's um, go over the first question and draw the pedigree for this family including Peter's parents. And he is a mother, he is a father and he is a Peter. And because we know that Peter is affected, so his genotype small a, small a, because this is autosomal recessive genetic disorder. And because he is affected, that means that he got uh, each uh, recessive allele from each of his parents. But his parents are phenotypically normal, so the genotype have to be uh, capital A, small a, they have to be carriers or have to be heterozygous. They are going to be phenotypically normal but would be carriers. Now Peter, uh, as we know, married to Sophie and they have two children, boy and girl. And now they want to find out probability for their children to be affected and the only way for them to be affected uh, would be if the mother would be heterozygous. Because if the mother would be homozygous dominant, would be capital A, capital A, there is no way how these children would be affected. In this case, they would have 100% um, probability of being heterozygous. Once again, if the mother's genotype would be capital A, capital A, and father's genotype small a, small a, all the children would be phenotypically normal and would be heterozygous, would be carriers. So in order to find probability for them to be affected with this genetic disorder, we have to assume that the mother uh, in this case have to be a carrier. And we know that probability of her being a carrier is 1 out of 50. It is also given in our problem that 1 out of 50 people in this population would be a carrier for this genetic disorder. Now when we know that um, father is obligate homozygous recessive and if we assume that mother uh, is heterozygous and has probability 1 out of 50 being heterozygous or 
2% probability that she is heterozygous, then we can find probability for their children to be affected with this genetic disorder. So capital A small a here, capital A small a here, small a small a here, and small a small a here. As you see, probability in this case for their children to be affected with this genetic disorder would be one half or fifty percent. Once again, our calculations would be as follows. So probability for their father of being uh, homozygous recessive is 100%, we know it. Probability for their mother of being heterozygous is 1 out of 50, and if parents would belong to these genotypes, probability for their child to be uh, also homozygous recessive in order to be um, affected is one half. So now we have to multiply all these independent probabilities and we would find that probability for the child to be affected with this genetic disorder would be one hundredth or this is going to be one percent. So one percent for one child and one percent for the second child. But if a uh, question would be what is the probability that uh, both children would be affected with this genetic disorder, our calculations would be as follows. So one hundredth probability that the first child would be affected and one hundredth probability that the second child also would be affected. And now we have to multiply all these probabilities and we can say that probability that this family would have two affected children would be 1 out of 10,000. And also we can say that uh, probability for this couple to have phenotypically normal child would be 99%. And probability for this couple to have uh, two normal children would be 99% multiplied by 99%, so this is roughly 98%. And this is all for today, thank you for your attention, please subscribe for my new videos that I post almost every day, thumbs up if you like this video, please write your comments, questions if you have any, share this video with your classmates, and see you in the next video, goodbye.